It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Dave Hayes, the praying medic, and we're going to be discussing his book, Traveling in the Spirit Made Simple. Dave, it is truly an honor, sir. Welcome to the show. Hey, Sean. Uh, it is an honor to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. My pleasure. I've been a fan of your content, your books, podcasts, all the things for many years. So excited to finally have you on the broadcast. However, I know inevitably somebody's going to be meeting you for the very first time in our talk today. So let's have you start this off by sharing a bit of the Dave Hayes slash praying medic origin story. So somebody meeting you for the first time, give us a little context. What do we need to know about you? Yeah, my 10 second elevator pitch. Uh <laughs> you can go 25 seconds. I the longest response I've ever gotten to this question is 30 minutes. So, you know, you, you pick something in between 10 seconds and 30 minutes and we'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Well, the background on me is um, I'm actually a former atheist. Um, I was an atheist until I was 38 years old. And I've worked as a paramedic for 35 years. Um, I actually met Jesus in the bunkhouse of a fire station about 20 years ago. So that tells you roughly how old I am. <laughs> And uh, I had a dramatic overnight conversion uh, from being a, an atheist who hated and mocked Christians one day to going out telling people about Jesus the very next day. It was a pretty dramatic uh, experience. And in 2008, I had a dream where I met God. This is actually the first dream I had had in 25 years. In this dream, I met God, and he basically told me that he wanted me to pray for my patients and said he was going to heal them if I did. Um, at that time, although I was a Christian, I'd been a Christian uh, for eight years. I, I was a cessationist, so I didn't believe in healing, didn't believe in miracles. And I had no idea what God was talking about when he said he's going to heal my patients. I was like, but I was taught you stop doing that 2,000 years ago. So. It took me a while uh, to wrap my head around this whole healing thing. And uh, after six to eight months of praying for all my patients and seeing none of them healed, I, I prayed for a roughly 500 patients over the course of six to eight months. Not all of them were in hospitals. Uh, Denise and I, my wife, we prayed for people in grocery stores and hardware stores, and I, I prayed in various places. but. Um, I, not knowing what healing is all about, it took me a while to learn, I had to read some books, had to watch some videos. Um, that was a time back in 2008 when there was a big street healing revival going on. And I was part of that. And I eventually, I got it. I under, started to understand power and authority, um, and saw a lot of people healed. Denise and I have seen thousands of people healed since then, wrote my first book, uh, Divine Healing Made Simple in 2013. And we just published our 16th book uh, a few weeks ago called Dream Interpretation Made Simple. And in the meantime, I've published a lot of other books, including Traveling in the Spirit Made Simple. Um, and the reason I, I wrote that book, um, actually, it, the Holy Spirit sort of puts me up to this. He's like, hey, I want you to write a book on this. I'll have a dream. Um, and God will show me the next book he wants me to write. I had written a book called My Craziest Adventures with God, Volume 2. And the day that I submitted the manuscript to my editor, I had a dream that night where I was writing a book on seeing in the spirit. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, what do you mean seeing in the spirit? Like, I have to write a book on that too? So the, the Lord has just kind of led me to, to write all these books. Um, and traveling in the spirit, uh, was kind of a, a a little side uh obsession that came over that, that I got interested in you know to again 2011 2012 um I started having these crazy experiences and I started having dreams where the lord was teaching me about traveling in the spirit and I was having some experiences and he was showing me his plan for it so uh like I always do before I write one of these books uh, a teaching book um, I, I get together on social media with a few thousand of my closest friends, and we brainstorm. We share experiences, we ask questions, 
we, we do some research, study the scriptures, study history, look at different perspectives on the issue. And then I kind of um, uh, uh, assimilate all of that, distill it down into a book that is hopefully easily readable for most people. So that's where this Traveling in the Spirit book came from. Um, it made some waves back when I published it because no one was really talking about Traveling in the Spirit. Michael Van Vleiman, uh, I think, was, was the main uh, author at that time who was talking about Traveling in the Spirit. And actually, he and I had done some interviews, and he became a friend of mine. His, uh, he had written a book called uh, Supernatural Transportation. And in that book, he answered a major question that I had about traveling in the spirit. And once I read his, his book, I was like, okay, that answers the question. And then I was able to finish my book on traveling the spirit. So that's kind of the backstory on the book. Well, we got your backstory and the book's backstory. That, that, yeah. that was a, a great answer to the first question. Um, and, and I think you're right. There is, there is kind of a, a gap in the market in terms of quality resources that talk about traveling in the spirit. I mean, if I really tried, I could probably list out a, four or five books off the top of my head. And I, Michael's is one that I, I've seen before uh, as well. I'm curious, before God prompted you to go down the path of writing this book, what had your exposure been to traveling in the spirit? Had you read about it? Had you heard testimonies? Uh, had you had your own experiences? What, what was kind of your experience level going into this project before you started kind of going down the rabbit hole, if you will? Yeah, well, it, it, was, a, it was a gradual experience. Um, and, and I had a lot of experiences. Um, I didn't, like a lot of people, you have these experiences and you're not quite sure what to make of it. Like I had a dream one time where I was um, in the dream, I was going and visiting friends of mine and I was um, like dropping off things at their house. Each person had dropped something off. And then uh, the morning after I had this dream, this friend of mine texts me and goes, hey man, thanks for stopping by last night. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, he goes, I had a dream. And in my dream, you showed up in my house and you were sitting next to me. And you said, uh, hey, you, you've got a shoulder injury. I'm going to pray for you. And so I started praying for him in the dream over the shoulder injury. He said he felt like um, a lightning bolt went through him. And then he woke up from the dream. In the morning, when he woke up, he was healed of a shoulder injury. He actually had a partial uh, separated uh, AC joint in his shoulder. He'd been working out and he, his workout was restricted because he had this shoulder injury. Number one, I never knew that he had a shoulder injury. <laughs> and number two, like I had this dream where I was visiting a friend and then I, he has a dream where I'm visiting him and actually praying for him to be healed. So in retrospect, I looked at that and I was like, did I travel in the spirit in a dream and get him healed? So I've had experiences like that. I've had experiences, uh, a, a lot of them when I'm asleep, but I have a lot of experiences when I'm awake too. Um, I've done some experiments. Uh, I was a little bit cautious of this at first because I really wasn't sure what it was about. But you know, I, I had learned how to hear, the, hear God's voice, follow the Holy Spirit. And um, I had this weird experience one day where I was, um, I was actually at a, a VA hospital. And I was just hanging out there between calls. And I was in a break room and they had all the lights shut out and I was sitting in a recliner and um, I saw this, this um, scene in my mind. I saw uh, what looked like a, it was daytime when I was seeing this vision and I saw a nighttime scene like on a country road out in the middle of nowhere and I saw a farm light and all of a sudden I realized I was walking on this road. I had this sensation of walking on a gravel road out in the country. Like I said, I saw the farm light. I could see a tree line in the distance. And I was, and I, what happened was I, I, I was like, okay, Lord, what is this? And he said, he kind of hinted, he suggested to me, you're traveling in the spirit. And I was like, okay, this is really weird. Um, the funny thing was I could hear my boots crunching on the gravel as I was walking on the road. My vision was kind of bouncy as I was walking in this vision. Um, I, I felt like I was standing upright walking, although I knew in my mind I was actually sitting in a recliner. I was just kind of a strange experience. I walked down this road for a little bit, and then 
I just said, okay, I, I've, I've experienced enough of this. And I just used my will and, and I, I came out of it, opened my eyes, turned the lights on. So yeah, I, I've done some experimenting on this. Um, and it, it's, uh, it's just, it's just a very interesting phenomenon. And one thing I would like to say is, you know, a lot of Christians, when, when they hear traveling in the spirit, they think, immediately think astral projection. And it's actually, there's a big difference between traveling, Christian spiritual travel and astral projection. Um, I don't know if you want to cover that next or if you have an, <laughs> some other question you'd like to talk yeah, about. Yeah, no, I, I have a question about that coming up in the interview. Um, I wanted to just get back to the first dream that you shared. Like how, like, I can understand how confirmation from somebody that they saw you or encountered you, like for building confidence early on, I can understand where that would be kind of critical and important. But um, yep. at, at this stage of the game, how often do you see confirmation of that? Or are, are you even worried about that anymore? I, I just imagine when somebody's starting out, that confirmation is a big confidence builder. Yeah, exactly. So uh, starting out, I was getting these little confirmations. Um, here's another example. Uh, I have a friend um, he lives in Indiana and he prays for a lot of people to be healed. He works at Home Depot and he's read all my books. And he loves praying for people to be healed at work. And uh, one day he said, uh, he texted me. He said, Hey, Dave, can you pray for this friend of mine? Uh, he's feeling sick. And I said, Yep, I'm praying for him. So I just kind of closed my eyes, said a little prayer for this guy. And then about 10 minutes later, my friend texted me and goes, hey, did you pray for my friend? And I said, yes. Why? And he said, you didn't go to his house, did you? <laughs> and I said, no, I prayed for him. I'm at home. He goes, I said, why? He goes, because he said someone showed up and was standing next to him praying over him. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, it might have been me. And see, this friend of mine, his name is Dwayne. He's had a lot of these experiences too. He's, he's, he, the Lord started having him travel in the spirit and seeing things and going places. So for me early on, having these little confirmations, little winks from God, like, yeah, you actually did go there. You did do this. And these people did see you. Um, I have had people ask me if I have preached at certain churches on certain days. And I was like, I don't think so. I wasn't there. I don't remember ever being there. Why? And they said, because there was a guy who looks like you, talks like you, has all your same manners and just mannerisms and gestures. He gave a message. He was a guest speaker at our church last weekend. <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, I don't have an explanation for that. Well, and uh, let's get back to traveling in the spirit, astral projection. What's the difference? I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that people want to kind of conflate or say they're the same thing. Yeah. Well, uh, it, you know, if you come from a, a background, a church background, where they frown on the supernatural and, and they're concerned about, you know, witchcraft and, and the occult and things of that nature, you're going to be concerned when you hear people talk about traveling in the spirit, because you're going to naturally equate that with astral projection, because it's the only thing you know of. Uh, but if you look through the Old Testament and the New Testament, you see um, the saints, uh, the prophets, and the apostles traveling in the Spirit all the time. First uh, Kings 18, Second uh, Kings 5, Elijah and Elisha both had experiences where they were traveling in the Spirit. Ezekiel was picked up by the Spirit of the Lord, carried to the river Chebar, Ezekiel 3. Um, in Acts chapter 8, Philip the Evangelist. After he baptized the Ethiopian eunuch in, in the ditch, in the water, the Spirit of the Lord picked him up, carried him to Azotus. And then, of course, there's um, the book of Revelation. Chapter 4 starts out, John uh, is on the island, and he says, I saw a door open in heaven, and a voice said, come up here. <laughs> and John's like, Zhoo! he goes up into heaven, and then the rest of the book of Revelation is what he sees and experiences, traveling in the Spirit. So it's, it's all over in the scriptures. And what I decided to do was um, do a little, in, a little research on um, astral projection. I've never done astral projection. I actually don't know that Christians can do astral projection. And, and there's a reason for that. Uh, because when you're born of the spirit, when you're born again, 
Uh, some of my friends have theorized that uh, the silver cord is cut, right? So people who astral project, they have a, they have a kind of a, a reliable set of experiences. When they're astral projection, they're always asleep. They usually feel strong vibrations. They usually hear loud noises. They usually have fear when they're about to leave their body. They leave their body. They go do things in the astral plane, and then they are snapped back into their body very suddenly. Many of them report seeing the silver cord going back to their physical body. Well, when when me and my friends, and we talk about our experiences of traveling in the spirit, we don't experience any of that. That no one that I know of, and I've talked to hundreds of people who have had these Christians, who've had these experiences, no vibrations, no loud noises, no fear, no silver cord. You don't get snapped back in your body. It's just the two experiences, if you kind of objectively just create a list of salient features, they're just very different. Uh, And so um, I was concerned at first that it might have been, you know, maybe this is astral projection. I didn't know a lot about it. So I read some books, the, the most popular books on astral projection. I read a lot of stories and, I, and then I compared the stories of me and my friends and I was like, these are not the same thing. So it, my, my curiosity was satisfied. And in terms of the, the why, is, is there a kingdom purpose to traveling in the spirit? Like what, why is this an option? What does God want to do with us through this yeah. process, if you will? Yeah, well, absolutely. There's a purpose. Um, Sometimes God needs us to be somewhere where we're not, (laughs) right? So he picks up Philip after he had just baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, and he takes him to another town. He picks up Ezekiel and says, hey, Ezekiel, I need you over here. (laughs) Hang on. We're going to go somewhere. Um, Most often, it's because God needs us or wants us somewhere to, to minister to someone Oftentimes, it is, uh, it, it's a ministry thing. Like, a, like almost all of my experiences, uh, the ones where the Holy Spirit gives me this experience, uh, it, it's I'm praying for someone to be healed. Or a lot of my friends actually have experiences where they're giving money to people, or they're praying for people, or they're going through deliverance. Um, I had an experience where I helped a friend through deliverance. Um, she was actually... Uh, a couple thousand miles away, she was texting me. I was actually on an ambulance call at the time. <laughs> she was texting me, and I'm with a patient, and I'm reading her text, and she's uh, experiencing a, a very bad demonic attack. And so, the crazy thing was, like, I, I'm I'm literally I, I'm on a call, but it's a it's an inner facility transport. So we dropped a patient off at a clinic appointment, and I was in the waiting room waiting for the patient to come back out. And, um, this woman was going through deliverance and she's explaining her experiences to me. And I was, I just had my eyes closed and I could see myself there with her. And I was helping her, I was commanding these demons to leave and get out of her. And it was, it was a little bit of an ugly uh, deliverance process. She was throwing up. Um, and, and I could, I could see everything happening as she's texting me. As I closed my mind, I could see what was going on. And she said she felt like I was there with her. So most of the time, uh, the Lord, when he does this, he has a a specific purpose for it. Usually healing, deliverance, some kind of ministry uh, thing is going on. And you've, uh, let's let's talk next about uh, maybe types of travel. You've referenced dreams already. Uh, Talk a little bit about translation by faith. What does that look like in the body, out of the body? What's the difference there? All right. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. <laughs> right. So you can travel in the spirit in a number of different ways. Uh, some people actually physically travel, their body travels. Some people basically travel in, in, in the spirit, their spirit travels, but their body remains where it is. Um, that's, that's much more common. Like I, I pray for people. Like I said, I, I get a lot of prayer requests. And um, a lot of times when I'm praying for people, uh, here's, here's another example. I was praying for a guy in Africa uh, one time, and I was praying for him, and he sensed me in the room with him. He felt like someone was standing next to him, had their hand on his shoulder, right? And, and it's, it's a little bit difficult to understand because if you're, you, you think, okay, if you're not traveling physically, 
why would someone see a physical manifestation of you there? Well, spirit beings, our spirit, can manifest and look like a physical body. Uh, this is what happens with angels, right? Angels have a spiritual body and demons have a spiritual body, but they can manifest in the natural and they can look like they have a solid human body. Um, because this, the, because the physical dimension is of a lower vibrational frequency, all a, all a spirit body has to do is lower its vibrational frequency and it will appear as a physical body rather than a being of light. And, and I know that sounds kind of new agey, but that's really what it comes down to. If you just look at it scientifically, um, it's, it's the frequency of vibration of the particles that are determining whether it's visible in the visible light spectrum. You understand the, um, the light spectrum, ultra, uh, sorry, uh, infrared and ultraviolet waves. Okay. You can't see anything above certain uh, color of violet because it, the, the light particles are vibrating too fast. You can't see them, they're invisible. Same thing with infrared. It's the frequency of vibration. And uh, so translation by faith is, we, we use that term. Uh, I, I use it interchangeably with traveling in the spirit. Translation by faith is, uh, it, you know, we, the, the kingdom of God is all about faith, right? We heal the sick by faith. We prophesy by faith. Everything we do is by faith. Faith is a currency of the kingdom, right? So if we need to go somewhere and do something, and uh, we need to like be there uh, by faith, we believe. We believe. We put our trust that God is going to take us there, and we're going to do what we need to do. And you can you can do it using your will, um, using exercising your will. You can. Go places in the spirit. I've <laughs> done it quite often. Um, so sometimes you have to do it, uh, and 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 there, right? So there's the exercise of our free will, where we decide I want to go here and I want to do this. Then there is the sovereign move of God, where God just picks you up and takes you somewhere. A little different dynamic. Um, again, sometimes you're in the body. Sometimes you're not in the body. Uh, and, and, you know, we, it's really easy to forget this, but, uh, since we are primarily a spirit, we have a soul and we inhabit a body. Okay. Our spirit is in the spiritual dimension all the time. We don't ever stop existing in the spirit. <laughs> it kind of seems that way sometimes. Like, if you have a dream where you you travel somewhere or the Lord picks you, your, you up, takes you somewhere, you're suddenly aware of the spiritual dimension. If you have a vision, suddenly you're aware of angels and demons, but those things are always there. Your spirit is always in the spiritual realm, moving, interacting with demons, angels, even though you're not aware of it, your mind isn't aware of it. Your spirit is interacting with spirit beings all the time. Uh, so it's a little bit of um, renewing your mind to the realities of the spiritual world. And in, uh, in terms of, uh, contrasting when you were starting out versus now, if we, if we use the phrase modes of travel, like, did it start more with dreams or trances or like what, how, I guess, how did it progress as you had more experiences or, or what, is there more of a norm for you at this stage in terms of what traveling in the spirit looks like for you? Yep. Because, uh, it's kind of strange. Although I hadn't had dreams for 25 years prior to 2008, I have dreams almost every night now. And often when I take a, a nap in the afternoon, I'll have a dream. So the Holy Spirit leads me primarily through dreams. That's kind of my, my comfort zone. Communication with the Lord, interacting with the kingdom. Um, a lot of that comes through dreams for me. That's not true for everybody. A lot of people don't dream much. So their experience may be uh, a little different than mine. My, my training wheels <laughs> came through dreams where the Lord was taking me places and showing me things. And then I, I started to get confirmation because people would email me, message me, and they would say, hey, were you here? Did you do this? And I was like, oh, gosh, I dreamed about that. The other night. Like, maybe I wasn't dreaming. Maybe I was actually there. Right. So 
that that was how the Lord kind of prepared me and gave me confirmation that, hey, you're having a real spiritual experience. I'm trying to do something here. Uh, first in dreams, I was doing it almost involuntarily. And then, you know, the Lord was like, you can do this voluntarily if you want to when you're awake. And that's when I started to engage the spiritual realm and started doing some experiments on my own. And uh, yeah, if you if you put this into practice, it can become a very normal thing. But like I said, yeah, it started with me for dreams. That may not be a uh, case for everybody. I know of a few other people who haven't done it much in dreams at all. They they just do it when they're awake. And they have these experiences and go places and, and see things and talk to people. You also have a chapter in the latter part of the book on portals. How do How do portals relate to traveling in the spirit? Oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just going to pull out all the crazy rabbits. That's that's a, <laughs> that's a deep subject. Um, again, uh, when the Lord started talking to me about portals, I was like, "What the what?" <laughs> you know, uh, I didn't have a grid for portals at first, but I did have a grid for hearing God's voice. So He very gently and very uh, gingerly taught me uh, about portals. Uh, and, and, and portals are essentially, uh, my understanding of, the, of it is that a portal is a passageway between God's kingdom and the physical realm, really. Uh, a lot of people, when they have near-death experiences, they travel through what they describe as a portal or a tunnel from the earth plane to heaven, and they see the light at the end of the tunnel, and they come out in heaven, and then they come back. Well, that's a portal. It's a passageway between God's kingdom and the physical realm of the earth. So uh, the Lord has been kind of teaching me about portals. And there is, uh, he's kind of suggested to me that portals serve a, uh, a purpose, that things go through the portals. People can go through the portals. Spirits, angels travel through portals. And so does Revelation. And I had an interesting experience one night where I was on the road, uh, and I was actually, I was, I don't speak a lot uh, publicly, but I was speaking at a conference, and I got to this hotel, and um, I wanted the Lord to speak to me while I was on the road, and, and, and sometimes that's kind of hit and miss, like when I'm at home, I have a lot of dreams, and it's like my angels know where I am, and, and God knows where to find me, where to send the dreams to, he's got my, my, my post office box, but when I'm traveling, I'm on, at hotels. I don't always have dreams. So that night I was like, you know, I really want to have a dream. And the Holy Spirit said, well, why don't you speak a portal into existence? I was like, do what? He goes, speak a portal into existence. And I was like, can I do that? He said, of course you can. You're my kid. So I spoke a portal into existence in the hotel room. And that night I had the craziest dream. Um, revelation came to me in this dream where I saw the effects of people's prayers 5, 10, 15, 25 years in the future. The Lord showed me these people praying, and then he showed me the effect of their prayers in the, in the future. I've never had a dream like that. But that night, I prayed for that portal, and boom, I got this crazy uh, dream. It was quite extensive, and there's a lot of revelation that I received. So I started just, you know, again, a newbie, not knowing much about this, started playing around with it. And um, it's, it's a, it seems to be a real phenomenon uh, that there are certain places uh, uh, and there, there is a way in which revelation can come to us through a portal. Like I said, angels come through portals. Uh, I don't know if God's manifest presence comes through portals. It might. Uh, I haven't really looked into that. but. Um, yeah. And, and we can travel. <laughs> like I said, when people die, when they have a near death experience, they travel through a portal into the heavens, right? So we can do the same thing. Our spirit can travel to different places through portals. Um, in, in the heavenly realms, there's actually a lot of doorways and hallways, um, in the courts of heaven and things of that nature. And there hallways are basically portals. It's a, it's a place that joins one place to another. And uh, probably the the place to land the interview as we get ready to wrap up. Uh, just speak briefly to 
the the idea of time travel in the sense that once we get out of this physical time bound space that we could impact past future what you know <laughs> based on your experience what's what's the possibility there we'll pull out another controversial oh gosh <laughs> that's another good one uh I, i'm actually asking the lord right now about what is possible um in, in the in the domain of time because uh like here's an example my wife um she's got um she has gluten intolerance and she's got some other um illness issues and i asked the lord one night after praying for her for about 2 years and her not being healed it was actually more like about 10 years to be honest um and she wasn't being healed one night in desperation i asked the lord okay what's the problem and that night in the dream he showed me that she needs her dna healed so DNA healing can be a little bit of a tricky issue. I've looked into a lot of suggestions and, and cures and remedies and, and prayers and things that people have come up with. I've heard almost all of them. And what I'm wondering is if I can actually go back in, in, in time and to the place where her DNA got screwed up and prevent that from happening. Right. So, and the reason I, I say that is I've had a couple of um, interviews with C.S. Lewis. Yeah, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I've had three interviews with C.S. Lewis. In one interview, he and I talked in a dream, just thought communications is not like we were sitting at a table or anything. Um, and he taught me about writing. And then in two other experiences, I went back to the time when he was alive and I interviewed him in his own uh, time, right? So if you think about this, uh, we live in the, uh, we have our primary, uh, what we think is real in the physical realm, which has the dimensions of height, width, depth, and the fourth dimension of time. Time is a dimension of the physical universe. but Time does not have domain over the spiritual universe, right? So you step into the spiritual world, into eternity, and time is really not an issue, right? So uh, once when you're in the kingdom, because time doesn't have lordship, time doesn't really have any, any bearing on what's going on. You can, it, apparently, you can go back in time, you can go forward in time, you can... You know, I, I've seen a lot of things in the future. Like I've had a lot of dreams, prophetic dreams, where I've seen things probably 10, 15, 20 years in the future. And I'm starting to wonder if I've actually, you know, just stepped into uh, the spiritual world, traveled to that time point in time and observed them firsthand. And to me, it appeared to be a dream, but I was actually there, you know, traveling in the spirit, right? Um, I've had some experiences and, and I have a lot of friends who've had experiences where we're driving to work and all of a sudden time stops. <laughs> I've had a number of experiences where like I'm driving and I'm driving, I'm looking at my watch and I'm looking at the clock and, and time has stopped. And I'm, you drive five or six miles and the clock isn't moving. Your watch isn't moving. Your phone, the clock just freezes and you just drive. And there's like, you're, you're outside of time. Um, that, that is becoming a more common experience. And I think that God wants to do some things uh, in, in, with, with us, with believers, that a lot of us don't have a grid for, and he wants us to get a grid for it. He wants us to start thinking outside the box, outside the limitations of this physical world, because you know he's, he's the king and we're the ambassadors of a spiritual kingdom. And I'm going to guess whether it's somebody watching or listening to this interview or they, they pick up the book, this may be a little bit on the edgier side of maybe things they've read about or encountered related to manifestations of the spirit. So in terms of this interview, the book, like what's the takeaway? How do you want people to be impacted when they encounter this message? Yep. The, the takeaway is God wants us to do a lot more than just sit in a church pew on Sunday and uh, give some money to the church. Uh, God actually wants to impact the earth in greater ways than most of us have ever even considered. Uh, he is a supernatural God. We are supernatural beings, whether we know it or not. And the Lord wants us 
He wants our cooperation with his plans because he plans to do some amazing things in the next 15 or 20 years. And it's going to require us to cooperate and start thinking outside the box. And in the opening part of this book, you talk about how Traveling the Spirit Made Simple is probably one of the more advanced books in this Made Simple series. If you had to pick an order for somebody who's just starting out, what order should they read the books in this series? Yep. I always recommend um, Hearing God's Voice Made Simple, even before the book on divine healing, because a lot of people will, um, they'll, they'll, if they read the divine healing made simple book, they'll understand the concepts of power and authority, but power and authority will only get you so far. Uh, you'll get, you know, 30 to 40% um, effectiveness in healing, and then you'll hit a wall. And if you can't hear the Lord's voice, if you can't receive words of knowledge, if you can't receive instruction, because you're not hearing God's voice, uh, you're, you're gonna, that wall is not going to move. Right? So I recommend get the book, Hearing God's Voice Made Simple, first. Do the exercises and learn to hear God's voice, hear the Holy Spirit, the ways that he communicates. Then go on to maybe Divine Healing Made Simple. Then go on to uh, either Seeing in the Spirit Made Simple, which is about seeing visions and seeing the spiritual world, or uh, Dream Interpretation Made Simple. And then uh, Traveling in the Spirit Made Simple is definitely the most advanced book. Uh, I've got another two more books that I'm working on right now in that series. One is on emotional healing and deliverance. And the other one is on is just a book on power and authority and expanding on the, on the idea of uh, primarily of authority. Because authority covers many different realms and many different aspects of life that a lot of people don't consider. And the Lord has asked me to write a, a, a book on that subject. So more books coming. Well, I'm sure we're all looking forward to those more books that are on the horizon. <laughs> uh, Dave, in terms of people connecting with you, books, mentoring, classes, resources, all the things, where do we discover you on the web? Yep. Uh, my website, I have two of them, actually. Uh, prayingmedic.com is the primary website that I'm using or articles, podcasts, uh, books, videos, resources. And then our ministry, our nonprofit ministry, that website is prayingmedic.org. And I am primarily active on Telegram right now. I have a Telegram channel uh, that has about 170,000 subscribers. And we are currently experiencing a crazy healing uh, revival on our Telegram channel. We're getting testimonies every day of people who are praying. Uh, and being healed, set free of demons. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, people are just posting testimonies like crazy. Um, I used to do primarily news and current events for the last four or five years. Suddenly, in the first week of December, the Lord said, "I want you to go back to healing and deliverance." So that's what I've been. So that's on Telegram. I have Gab and other accounts. I don't use them very much. I'm primarily on Telegram right now. And like we do with every episode, we'll make it easy. We'll have links in the show notes or the description, depending on how you're accessing this comment with links to websites, social media mentioned, and places where you can buy any of the books that we've mentioned as well. It's time to bring this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Dave Hayes, The Praying Medic. Once again, our book today was Traveling in the Spirit Made Simple. And Dave, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, Sean. Uh, love being on the show. Uh, if you need me to come back sometime, let me know.